welfare system that we think encouraged in some ways gener generational dependency. And uh, Congress, along with Bill Clinton, we took the first step in terms of welfare reform. Uh, but anything that just stays still doesn't work. So we have to constantly innovate. And I believe what we're talking about here is literally changing welfare as we know it because of what's going to happen under the direction of Cynthia and Doug. We, we are going to take that piece of legislation in Washington and that sort of vision that we're just going to refine it. We're going to make it better. Now let me just uh, say a couple things. Nobody should ever forget the fact that we are all made image, in the image of the Lord. There is no upper, there is no lower. We are all in this world together. And the idea that somebody is dependent or whatever, forget about it, because we're not to be thinking of other human beings in that way. Um, secondly, in the course of serving people who are all made in God's image, we as individuals don't have the right to blur that image because of turf, ego, and we all have it. I mean, I'm the first one. I'm the, I'll, I'll declare myself as the greatest flawed in the room. But we don't have the right to say, I will not help somebody because somehow it takes something out of me. That gets right down to our challenges in vocational education, where schools have got to work hard and openly to make sure that children are placed in the right environment for, to, to meet their passions and their intelligence and their expectations. Uh, John Fisher here has been here, he told me, 38 years. Now, I don't know how this guy hasn't burned out. He must be drinking something. Uh, it comes out of the back of his yard or whatever. But I've, I've heard about him, and I got a chance to meet him today. And tremendous credit, tremendous credit has to go to all the folks in Licking County. I would assume it's the county commissioners. I would assume it's the different uh, social service advocates. This, from what I understand, this has been a commitment to lift people up. And Fisher's been the leader of this, and I've asked him to do a few things that would be helpful. Uh, I just got off the phone, by the way, with Pat Tberry, because one of the things that John pointed out is that if you go to get training for a GED, think about this, it doesn't count as credit towards your work requirement. <laughs> now, <laughs> if, how, how could that even be? Well, that was one of the things that we didn't get right in welfare reform back in the 90s. But if somebody's going to work to get a GED, because 50% of his people here do not have a GED, how are they supposed to get hired? So I asked Pat if he would fight and work in Washington to get that change. He said he's always been committed to it. He's frustrated it didn't get done before, but he's willing to go at it again, both in the House and the Senate, to change that one little part of welfare reform. If you want to go and get a GED so you can get a job, it should count as credit towards your, your, uh, your work requirement. Now, John, it's great what you're doing. He's combining everything. This Ohio means jobs, which we're all excited about. I love the sign out here. I mean, just look, when you pull in the parking lot, it doesn't look like you're going somewhere asking somebody for something. It just looks like a regular old place. And so people are coming in here, and he's taking the in-demand jobs. He's combining it with training. He's making everything real. He's, he's, he's really keeping it real is what he's doing here in this operation. Now, Katie and her company, for them to say, we need employees. Now, I hear this from a lot of employers around the state. Well, we need employees and we can't find any. Well, they're in here and they're saying, we need employees and we'll work with you to, uh, to get it done. So Owens Corning is stepping up and saying, give us employees. And they got 90 of them. They got a 90% retention rate, and some of these people have, have no training whatsoever. So John works with Owens Corning. They train people collaboratively for a while. These people get jobs, and they, they move on to realize their hopes and dreams. Because remember, no matter who it is, no matter who it is in life, I don't care if it's the guy you see sleeping under a bridge. 
He has hope for what he wants. He has, maybe he doesn't always have hope, but he has dreams, right? He's got dreams about, or she's got dreams. Got to help him to get those dreams. Doesn't that feel good to be able to do something like that? So that is just terrific, Katie, and we need to expand that statewide. We need to take John's attitude here and what he's the approach here and extend it statewide. Now, all other parts of the state, other parts of the state, probably going to say, "No, we'd like to do it this way." That's fine. I said to Doug, "Doug, how are you going to deal with people who say, no, it's my way. I'm not interested?'" He said, "Well, you know, I will bring about change. You know, I don't know. Will you support me when I go about this change?" I said, have you been living in a cave? Uh, we don't let anything stand in our way when it comes to helping to lift people. And that's uh, really what this program is. Now, Cynthia, she's unbelievable. I mean, she's a great communicator. She's, she's, she's got it all. And they are a great team. Um, for those people, my, my pals in the legislature,